And in today's video here in the off-grid garage, I want to have a look at these enclosures I recently got from eBay. Uh, these will hold my fuse holders here. I've got one, two, three, four spaces. And I would like to mount this one on the roof under one of the solar panels, but I need easy access from the outside just in case I need to pull a fuse or something, isolate a circuit. Uh, let me explain. So this will be the situation. As you know, we will mount six of these 220 watt solar panels. One, two, three, four, five, yeah, six. Six of these 220 watt solar panels on the garage here. I've got two rails each for three panels. And I would like to uh, connect them differently just for testing purposes. And that's why I have four fuses for six panels. So what I will do is the first three panels, I will cable them in parallel. That means the positive and the negative come in into the garage separately. The positive is going through the fuse box though, and then comes down to a terminal, well, like to a terminal like this one, where we have several outlets for the solar panels, but separately. So. And then I will have this terminal down here with the switches in there and, and an XT60 connector at the bottom where I can connect my solar charge controllers and do some testing. So we're running the first three all in parallel. The next three panels I will put in series. That means the positive goes to the negative of the next panel and the positive of this one goes to the negative of the other panel. So here we will have around 110 volt DC. And that's why I need another fuse just for these three panels. You can see I've got one, two, three for these three, uh, three panels because they are in parallel. And then I've got only one fuse for these ones because they are in series. The positive of these series connected dollar panels comes down to a different terminal with a switch and the negative as well. And we will have a different connector here. I'm not sure if I use an XT60 because we will have 110 volt DC. And you clearly don't want to mess around with 110 volt DC anymore. I don't want to touch this one. You can get shocked, so be very careful. The other ones should be fine because we will have a maximum voltage of 33 volts only. So this is still considered a small voltage, but 110 volt DC, be careful. And I would like to have these fuses here as close as possible to the solar panels. So the actual fuse inside the box here protects actually my cabling as well. So just from this security perspective, I bought this weatherproof enclosure here for four, for four fuse holders. Uh, well, they haven't arrived yet, but they should be very soon. Three for the parallel, one for the serious connection of my solar panels. And then we can start mounting the panels and get the cables down. So the plan is to have these solar panels connected to the big battery and charge it up during the day. Well, most of the time I can leave the solar panels just connected to charge the battery. And if I do some testing, I can take them off individually or in a group or all of them and do some testing here on the workbench with different solar charge controllers, different batteries. And when I'm done, I reconnect them back to the battery. So they won't be connected to the battery all the time, but this should be fine. I'm not doing testing every day, you know. So, and now the question is, how do I mount this enclosure on the roof so I can access it? It is a bit protected from the weather under the solar panels tucked away. Well, I don't know yet. I had a look. I had some idea with these brackets, which I still have. These are the concrete tile brackets for the solar mounts. So I potentially could use one of them and just mount this enclosure like this and then have it mounted on the roof. So it looks like this then. But I think this is too high already. Let's have a look. Now it fits. Huh. Look at this beauty. So if I mount this one here on the roof, this would actually fit. See the height? Perfect. Okay, let's do that. And I've got three panels stopping over here somewhere and then I've got a gap 
of about 30 centimeters in between the panels and then the next row panels comes and I probably mount this one I probably mount this one over there under these panels in this area I'm just not sure if I use only one screw here if this is a bit too wobbly well I need to try eh? No, that's good enough. That is definitely good enough. One screw here, that's fine. Super sturdy, that's cool. It's just the enclosure, you know. There's no load on it. Yeah, and definitely this is a lot higher where the solar panel sits. So it sits nice and protected under the solar panel, away from the sun, away from the elements. It is weatherproof, but, you know, it is protected. Nice. Okay, so, can have one group of panels connected here, the other one here. And this could be our outlet. That works well. I just need to have a look if I've got some bushes or clans for that to fit the conduit. As you know, as you know, on this channel here, I'm trying to use as much material as possible, which I already have, so I don't want to buy anything anymore. And let's see, we've got millions of cable lugs here. Millions of them. Ooh, they're a bit big, huh? Something similar like this. Nah, they're a bit too small. Ah, oh, they're only big ones here either. Yeah, all this electric material here is from a company I worked for when we came over here to Australia. And the company went um, bankrupt. A year after I started there and they told us well we cannot pay you anymore take whatever equipment you need and sell it to make some money so I had a big car at this time yeah now I don't have any no these are the wrong ones I'll show you which one we need here there's one that's what I want this is the connection for the conduit and this one goes directly into the enclosure but I think this is the only one I had okay I probably need to buy three of them okay we don't have any cable glands for this enclosure at the moment I'll have a look at the hardware store when I buy the conduit as well that should be fine Okay, so the only thing I can do is uh, drill some holes and mount this to the bracket. Two holes in there, done. Well, who would have thought that we are reusing all these brackets now? I was going to sell them here on the online store, but now we have used four of them already for the solar panels up there. And this is number five now for the fuse enclosure. I have got another two here, just in case. Well, these are probably one of the last M8 bolts and nuts I have, can actually find here. I have to go to M10 then or M6. I used a lot of them for my solar mounting on the roof actually. So, well, well we've got these two now for the enclosure. Well, and then we see what happens in the future. Very good. Overall, I'm very happy with this result here. 
Yeah, it's definitely below the solar panel level. Protected from rain and sun. Easy to service here from the gutter. You, well, you just need a ladder, right? Just in case. Very good. Well, there it is now. Our fuse holder box on top of the roof. Okay guys, so far this video for today. Thank you for watching as always. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And I guess we see us again in the next video very soon here in the Off-Grid Garage. Thanks again guys. See ya. Bye bye.